I'm here in the utility room of our building where the power company has installed an energy meter to track our electrical usage. Now unfortunately, we never know how much electricity we've used until the bill comes a month later. Wouldn't it be great to monitor your own electrical usage in real time so that you could track and manage your power bill? Well you can and it's actually pretty easy with the right equipment. Many meters provide auxiliary dry contacts so that you can see the same data as the utility sees. If you don't have those auxiliary contacts on your power meter, a quick phone call to your utility company should get you hooked up in no time. Now, once installed, you'll see a little box like this one with three terminals and three wires coming out of it. What are those terminals and what are those wires? How do you connect to them and how do you get that data into software or cloud applications for analysis? In this video, I'll show you how. So let's head back to the workshop and get started. Here we are back at the workshop. And before we jump right in, let's take a look at the big picture. What's the signal path from a high level? Well, remember these three wires? They come from the dry contact outputs on the power meter. We're going to convert these dry contact signals to digital data which is going to make them suitable for use in any number of software and cloud applications. The meter's dry contacts generate electrical pulses that are called KY or KYZ. They're the most common way utility companies provide for on-site real-time energy monitoring. So let's take a quick look at what they are and how they work. If you have just two wires, it's a KY setup. You have a single dry contact, a small mechanical relay in the power meter, which will open and close each time your facility has used X amount of kilowatt hours of energy. The more power you use, the faster the switch will open and close. With a KYZ setup, you simply get an additional dry contact. So you end up with three wires, two relays and a common. Now, the advantage of a KYZ setup is that you get better resolution, which means higher accuracy during any given time span. The amount of kilowatt hours each pulse represents will be attached or written on the termination panel in the utility room. In the case of the Opto 22 facility, each KYZ pulse is worth 0.6 of a kilowatt hour. Okay, so that's the meter side of the story. How do we count those contact closures? For this workshop, I'll be using a Snappack Learning Center. It's basically a Snappack system where the controller, a rack and several I.O. modules that we use for training here at Opto 22. This panel simulates some of the typical I.O. signals like a meter, potentiometer, LEDs and switches. The controller is running a control strategy that's loaded into its memory. And I'll be using pack control on this Windows laptop to configure the strategy which is then downloaded to the controller. The controller and the control strategy work together to convert the KYZ pulses into digital data. Now you can get your own learning center and free pack control software by visiting workshop.opto22.com. So here's our three wires from the power meter. We've labeled them to match what we saw in the utility box next to the meter. The next step then is to convert these mechanical dry contacts into a small voltage that we could measure. Now we could connect a power supply to one side of the contact and then put the other side into digital meter and then wire that side to ground, thus completing an electrical circuit. But there's the added cost of supplying and installing that power supply. Well thankfully there's a better way. The SNAP IDC5SW module has the excitation voltage built right in. So now it's just a simple matter of connecting the three wires and connecting the common between the two inputs. And the nice thing about using this module is that it only produces a small voltage, which means it won't burn out the small relays in the power meter, but it is still powerful enough to run over a thousand meters of cable. So you don't need to install a snap pack system right next to your power meter. It could be in another room or another part of the building. So let's get to actually wiring this module. Note how the wiring diagram is on the side of the module. It's also available in the data sheet on our website. 
Now, this is a voltage sourcing module. So let's make sure that we connect our common or K wire into terminals one and three. So to do this, we take our K and we take a small jumper wire and we get the two of them together and we put that into terminal one. Make sure they're both seated home. Now, taking a small flathead screwdriver, let's do up screw terminal number one. Just keeping those wires seated and you don't have to go crazy, just tighten number one. Now we take the other end of that short jumper wire and we put that into the common of the second input, which is terminal three. So now we can do up that jumper wire in terminal three. Now let's take our Y input from the Y relay and let's put that into terminal two, which is our first input channel. Lastly now, our Z wire goes into the second channel input, which is terminal four. And let's do that up. Okay, there we go. So let's just review now. Our K or common wire goes into terminals one and three. Y goes into terminal two and Z goes into terminal four. Next, snap the module into the rack. I'm gonna use position seven here on the end of the rack. And straight away, we can see that our module LEDs is pulsing on and off so that we know all of our wiring is correct. So that's pretty sweet. All right, that's the, the wiring in the module install. So now let's move on to the laptop and configure those pulses in the software. Here we are in pack control. We've already got our IO rack configured. So let's now double click on the empty slot in position seven to add our digital input module, a SNAP IDC5SW. Double click on the first point of the module to open the point configuration dialog. Now we'll give it a tag name like building KWHY pulse. This is where each input is giving a meaningful name for your software application or cloud service. So choose your name accordingly. Let's double click on channel two and call it building KWH Z pulse. Now click on this debug button to download the configuration to your controller. Click yes to save and yes that you've made a change and the download process will start. Once that's done, click run to execute the new strategy. Now we can check the two inputs by double clicking their names in the strategy tree. You can see the power meter pulses arrive in the software. They tick back and forth as each mechanical relay in the power meter switches on and off. Now at this point, you could use pack control to measure the time that it takes each pulse to arrive and its duration. And from this, you can calculate your building power and perhaps sound an alarm or send an email if it goes outside of limits. Or you could log the energy and power use of the facility inside the controller. Here at Opto, once we could see the live energy use of the building, we quickly saw that if the air conditioning units turned on at the same time, we had a pretty massive power spike. So we changed the building automation code so that only one unit ran at a time and we saved a lot of money on our power bill. Using a tool like Node Red, you can write the energy use to a database, either locally or in the cloud. Or you could send it to any number of cloud services like Microsoft Azure or IBM Watson, where it could not only be monitored, but you could analyze your facility energy use versus say current weather conditions. For more information about energy monitoring and to see the parts that we used in this workshop, visit workshop.opto22.com. So there you go. The dry contact relay closure from the power meter is being converted to digital data and analyzed. Cheers, mate.